video is going to be answering the question um, that I get or I've been getting a few times and it's how did I get to the point that I am on how I do things from what I understand the question is meaning like how did I get to where I am gardening how did I get to where I am watching what we eat cooking from scratch things like that and so I want to use this video to answer that question. It is going to be a very um, basic answer. There's a lot of details that I could add, but I don't have very long doing this. So um, I'm going to answer the best that I can. And this is my fifth time recording this because my answer tends to turn into a rant. And not trying to put anybody down or anything down, but it's just something that I am passionate about and uh, I mean this is something I've been doing for nine years and something that I've learned a lot about like even throughout those years I just learned more and more and more and more every year every day and so it is something that I'm passionate about it is something that I can tend to get a little um, radical with <laughs> and so I have re uh, redone this recording a few times but Anyways, I'm going to try to keep it just with my answer without going rantish and um, try, try to answer it in a way that I, I believe the question is being asked. So when it comes to the garden, how I got to where I am now, um, I mean, we have lived all over the place and I have not had the space or the yard or anything like that to do the garden like I do now. But I have always gardened in some kind of shape or form throughout the years, even when I was younger. And I believe that the seeds were sown when I was young, like elementary school young, for loving the garden and loving the idea of having things in my yard that I have grown that we can eat. Something that we can go out and, you know, if I don't know what I want to cook for dinner, it's, it's okay, I can just go in the yard and figure out, you know, what's growing, what it is that I want to make, and I believe those seeds were sown by my great-grandparents on my dad's side. I remember very young, um, they passed when I was very young, so I didn't really get to learn a lot from them because being very young, I didn't really understand the value of the experiences I was having with them to really ask questions and want to learn. Um, but I remember very young, we would go, we, we never lived very far from them. We moved around between Alabama and Louisiana. And so we're never too far from them because they lived in Mississippi. And so we would go and my great grandma, if everybody stayed long enough for meal time. She would always have some kind of protein, you know, whether it was ribs or a roast or chicken were the most common that I remember anyways. And for sides, we would just go out in their yard. They lived on acreage. They had um, cotton fields that they leased out. And then they had, you know, a small bit of it that they had their garden. They had their chickens. They lived in a very small house that was like up on cinder blocks and uh, it, it was not much, but I absolutely loved being out there. It, like, just just very young spoke to me. And so for our sides, we would just go out to the garden, and we would harvest whatever it is that they had growing in that time of year. And after we harvested it, I mean, of course, we had to prepare it. And so we would, I remember having, like, bowls of corn or bowls of green beans and we would go to their side porch and we would, you know, some of us would sit on the porch, some on the steps, wherever we fit. And we would just sit out there visiting while some of us had these bowls of food and we would be shucking corn or snapping beans or whatever it was we were working on. And then they also had this really large, kind of to the back side of their house, this really large um, fig tree. And, I mean, we would go out and just pick the figs straight off the tree and eat them right there. Like, we wouldn't even bring them inside. we just eat them fresh off the tree. And it, I, I loved everything about that. And that stayed with me for, 
years. I mean, you know, the experience that I got with that is only when we would go to their house. But I've always loved it, and I carry that with me for, I mean, all these years. And so when it comes to the desire to grow something that we eat or something that we enjoy eating or can eat, um, I believe that's where that comes from. And then since my garden is not, like, I don't have rows of just broccoli or rows of just corn or rows of just green beans. Like, my garden's pretty mix and match. (laughs) It's kind of like a collage of things. And I like doing it that way because when everything grows and fills out, it's just, like, this amazing, almost oasis type of location in the yard. And... I really like that. I love going out there and all of the butterflies and birds and hummingbirds and dragonflies because I do have a little pond in the middle of where our garden sits. And so there's dragonflies all the time. There's frogs. Like I love just the wildness of it and um, just its own little ecosystem. And so, you know, I do grow along with everything that we eat. Of course, there's herbs. And then there's flowers all mixed in and um, wanting something beautiful but functional and edible I believe comes from gardening so many years with my mom because she did a lot of flower gardening and I mean we did have a grapevine at one time. Um, We did have accidental watermelons sometimes. I mean and some tomatoes like there were a few things that she would grow that were edible but for the most part it was you know, bushes and uh, shrubs and flowers. And um, I mean, we always had a gorgeous yard. It was always something, you know, like a, an oasis, like our yard was always an oasis. It was some place you can go that was beautiful and relaxing and just kind of, you can relieve a lot of your stress there. And so I want my garden to be something that is edible, something that feeds us, but I also want it to be a place where we can relieve stress. And um, not able to go into it too much because I don't have time. But, of course, working in, in the dirt, working in nature relief stress anyways. But I wanted a place where you can go and you, know, you can just go and sit or just go and walk around and look at everything and watch nature, watch all the wildlife and just have a place where you can have some peace for a little while. And um, we all need something like that. It's very important. And so... I believe that those two um, experiences in my life when I was much younger, I believe that those um, sowed the seeds for me to do and enjoy and desire what I have now when it comes to the garden. Now, when it comes to watching what my family eats, being very, very extreme, I mean, picky. I, I, I was going to say extreme. I don't know if it's really as extreme as some people. Um, I think some people get more extreme or it looks like they get more extreme because they pick particular diets instead of picking just things that is better just to stay away from. And we don't follow a particular diet, you know, gluten free or vegan or anything like that. What we follow and what I truly believe is um, the way we're intended to eat is very traditional. And when I say traditional, I'm not talking cream potatoes and gravy all the time. I'm talking about traditional, like, I mean, going back to like the 17th and 18th century kind of traditional and which is a era that I've always enjoyed learning about, always enjoyed watching. So uh, another thing that kind of, um, impacts what I do but very, very traditional and is the way that we choose to eat. And so what led me to that is after I got married and we decided, you know, very quick story, we decided to um, start a family, had a hard time with it. I mean, we even, you know, saw all the doctors, did all the tests, felt like I wasn't really getting listened to. The tests were all coming back fine. I mean, even went to a fertility specialist for a couple of months and, um, you know, they kept telling me, you know, they suspected it was one thing with me and I'm telling them, look, I live in my body. I know my body, like that's not the problem. And after a few tests and watching how, you know, my body worked for a couple of months, no, that wasn't the problem. They didn't really know what the problem was. And anyways, we ended up with them, I guess we had to be watched, I don't know, but we ended up getting pregnant. 
with our first. And, um, but during those years of struggling, that's when I dove into natural and holistic living, like from the perspective of, you know, changing the way you eat, um, even what you clean your house with, the makeup that you wear, like the different types of clothing that affect actually affect our body and um, being in the dirt, walking um, outside barefoot, having that grounding time, like all, all of that, like even to the extent of I got certified as a health coach as a very basic certification. But I mean, I got so deep into it that I did take courses and uh, pay for classes and, and all kinds of things. And so we finally get pregnant with our first and fast forward to our third, because I'm running out of time, but fast forward to our third, um, our youngest, Anna, before she turned a year, she started all of a sudden having these very violent fever episodes. And it does have a name. I can't remember the first part of the name, but something fever. And it was a process to figure figure that out. And, um, you know, everything has to be named, whether it makes sense or not. But um, it, she would get these fevers where they would last five to seven days. The really bad ones were seven days. And it was just awful. And the first three days, I mean, I'm talking like fever that would go up to 104. And, um, you know, I used Tylenol, Advil, Motrin, any of that very sparingly. And the first three days to keep her fever under 103, I would have to alternate Tylenol and Motrin around the clock for those first three days. Once she hit day four, her fever started spreading out. They started being a little more forgiving. But those first three days were terrifying, especially in the several months that we did not have any idea what was going on. And this was this would happen every two to three weeks. Like we could, it was like clockwork. And so, I mean, we saw several different doctors, specialists. We were put in a hospital for a week the whole time she had an episode. And that one, of course, lasted a week. So we were stuck there for a week. And um, that was just terrible. We got discharged with the answer of they don't know what it is. Just like every other time we went to the doctor with her. And um, so I was at the chiropractor one time, who was fantastic, by the way. If y'all don't see a chiropractor look in into seeing a chiropractor because that is that is another very important thing for your health making sure that your nervous system is very healthy but um talking to the chiropractor about it and this is after we got out of the hospital did all the tests and everything and um she said well since it's like something chronic what about doing a parasite cleanse parasite cleanses are very important you think you don't have a parasite you most likely 100 percent do and they can cause all kinds of issues, whether you have chronic issues or not, they can still be causing a lot of issues that you're having. And so um, I did look into uh, cleanses that were safe for children. And I came across this company, if I say it correctly, BioRay. And they have um, a line for children and a line for adults. They even have a clinical line. And so cutting out, which, I, you know, we already ate very clean, uh, very traditional, very clean, but we would eat out every now and then. And, you know, I, I know what's going on in restaurants. I know how they cook the food. You know, I, I know what's going on. And, you know, we would still do it every now and then because I'm trying to not be that much of a weirdo. And, but we, I cut that out. Uh, once we started this cleanse, I said, okay, you know what? I'm changing two things. We're going to do this cleanse on a regular basis every single day. We do it morning and night, every single day. And we are not eating out anymore. I will make everything, and that's what I do, okay? She has stopped having um, these little episodes. She has had two episodes since I made these changes, but they always followed after a week that we ate out more than one time. And uh, any other time, if we eat out or have food out that is not something that I'm making, if we have that more than once a week, she ends up getting an episode. They are more mild because I believe, well, I believe it's because she's on the detox along with eating out. So there is some kind of toxin that's building up in her system eating out, but the detox was helping it to keep the fevers a little um, less vicious, have the spell a little more mild. But cutting out eating out, making everything at home, and the detox has helped us so, so much and something that I truly believe in.